I'm so excited about introducing our first panelist because uh, she's actually a great friend of mine. Uh, if you did 10,000 Ideas, uh, you will have met um, her incredible husband as well. Uh, but she is and has an incredible career. After winning Tropfest, uh, she's gone on to start a creative agency, start also a film company for people with disabilities, and only just uh, a couple of weeks back got named New South Wales Young Australian of the Year. Would you please welcome to the stage Genevieve Clay Smith? <laughs> awesome to have you here. Hey, how are you? Good to see Good. you. Mwah. Grab a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Genevieve, I've tried to sum up your career in a terribly tiny amount of words. So <laughs> um, I'm hoping we get a bit of time to, to try and elaborate on that. But you tell us maybe a little bit about how you combine your professional career in the various forms it has at the moment, obviously in film, um, with social entrepreneurship. Mm, yes. That might be a new concept, I guess. Yeah, so um, I'm a filmmaker, I'm a director. Uh, commercial director, and um, I've had the good fortune to be able to combine my work as a director with, um, uh, you know, social entrepreneurship. So that is basically making a business that is uh, has a social conscious. And um, I started a not-for-profit organisation after winning Tropfest to help people with a disability get involved in making films. So when we made our Tropfest winning film. Um, I made it uh, about a man with, a with Down syndrome. And because we made it about a person with a disability, I felt very ethically driven to make it with people with disabilities as well. And so I held a workshop with five interested people with, an in with, um, with a disability. And, uh, and then they came on board the set of the Tropfest winning film and made it with us. And then when it won Tropfest, we're like, well, this is really important that we're giving people the opportunity to um, learn about filmmaking while making a film and then seeing that film go on to be a success and also that film raised really important issues as well. So uh, we just wanted to keep doing that. So that was the story of the beginning yeah. of Bus Stop Films. Why is it called Bus Stop Films? Well, the Trop Fest film, Be My Brother, was, um, was made at a bus stop. It was set in one location, all at a bus stop. So we thought, it's fitting. <laughs> we'll just name it Bus Stop Films. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. And you've been making films, and you use the word inclusive filmmaking. Mm. So I guess that's gone on from simply the disability community. Can you tell mm. us about inclusive filmmaking today? Yeah, so for me, making films about a vulnerable or marginalized community, um, you know, it's really important that that community benefits from the film being made. And um, so for me, inclusive filmmaking, it's really all about the process being just as important as the end result. So we do workshops, um, you know, we help people to learn about filmmaking and then bring them on board for practical work experience, making the film, work, work with mentors, learn about how to make a film. And uh, we've recently um, broadened, uh, you know, the communities we're working with. We, I just made a film last year uh, with the South Sudanese refugee community which has gone on to do you know, really well. And out of that, two people that I mentored are now working. Uh, one guy got a gig on Angelina Jolie's film Unbroken. And he is a guy with a refugee background. And he's gone on to continue to be employed in the feature film and TV mm. commercial industry. And I've also continued mentor relationship with one of the actors. And we just got up a one-man show. So for me, it's all about you know, the process of the people from the community learning and then having a sustainable mentorship relationship post that experience to really create uh, feasible pathways to inclusion within, within the film industry, which is a very hard industry to get involved in. That's awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Genevieve Clay Smith. And I'm really glad that we are, because we've got um, three people here, um, all of yourselves, who have started something uh, not only significant in your lives, but significant in the world around us. I want to take you back to that moment when you decided to get started. Um, Genevieve, perhaps for yourself, for Bus Stop Films, what was that moment, and what was the first thing you did? <laughs> um, the moment was uh, probably a few months after winning Tropfest, and I was going to make another film, and I wanted to do it in the same way. I wanted to hold a workshop with people with disabilities so they could help make the film, because it was about a person with another film about a person with a disability. And um, I just said to my producer, I'm like, we should start something <laughs> that does this regularly. <laughs> and um, That so was just kind of it. <laughs> that was it. 
It's like, oh, we're going to start it, and then it's just there. <laughs> it was as simple as that thought process. So literally, you're saying to people here, like, if you just want to start something, they could just say it's done. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important that you have a strong... Like, I could never do what I'm doing alone. Right. Like, it's very difficult to do things on your own. You, 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 you know, you can't really um, push a, you know, push an idea without people. Um, I've always found that my breakthroughs are on the other side of a person. So the person is the doorway to a breakthrough, uh, a doorway to a great opportunity. And so, um, you know, I think Eleanor, who's the co-founder of Bus Stop Films, was um, really instrumental in the support and the positivity of, yeah, okay, well, if, if you want to do this, let's do it. And, um, and from there, it was just a step-by-step -step process. I've just kind of kept walking through opportunities that have been presented, and, um, and now we, you know, we have a not-for-profit, so, yeah. What are the particular challenges of inclusive filmmaking? Look, there's, there's a lot of challenges, there's always, and there's always challenges, continues to be challenges. Um, I, think, I think one of the biggest things that you'll face at the start of something is criticism. I was criticised in my industry, so I went for um, a meeting with a very large agency uh, to see if they wanted to take me on as a director, and when I was telling uh, the woman who was uh, kind of sussing me out for the ta as, as a talent, when uh, I told her about my next film and how I wanted to do it and my ideas of inclusive filmmaking, she just said to me bluntly, she's like, why do you want to keep making films about disabled people? You'll just be known as the girl who only makes films about disabled people. Your career wow. will be ruined. And um, in that moment, I, I mean, I was pretty devastated to hear that from somebody who knew more than me, she'd been around more than me, she was older than me, I was only 20, she was like, you know, in her 50s, been around a long time. You trusted her. Yeah, and so I had to make a decision, did I want to follow my heart or did I want to listen to that and let her words cattle brand my brain and stop me from doing something I felt very driven to do. Yeah, wow. All right, Genevieve, what's the day in the life of a film director? Murray? <laughs> it's all over the shop. It looks different every day. It's completely different. If I'm working on a commercial film job, I'll be working on that, and then I'll also, at some point during the week, I'll be checking in on bus stop films, writing workshop material, making sure bills get paid, money's getting in, and then if I'm, I'm contracted to do something else I'm doing, or I'm here, and you know, it's so like there's all but lots of different things. Yeah. Is it what you imagine when you design a career in film directing? No, no, it, I, I, never, I never really knew what life would look like day to day. And I, I always kind of, I mean, I, I had no idea what was going to happen to me. <laughs> I just kind of went on a journey. But I always, I, I, I at one point, I, I thought, yes, if I'm a director, I'll just be directing and I'll have like, you know, four months, a block of four months where I'm working on a, on a job and then I'll have like a month off and then another four blocks of working on a job. But now because of bus stop and having a social enterprise, it is, um, it's very unique, you know, yeah. to, to be juggling, you know, running a not-for-profit as well as work and then trying to bring the two together as well because I, I get my students that I teach at bus stop um, onto commercial film projects for work experience and sometimes some paid employment too. It's so awesome. it's like trying to work out how I can combine the two worlds continuously and it's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting, every day is exciting. <laughs> so definitely do that, okay.